Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia! Today is the beginning of Christian Aid Week. Like many church activities at the moment, Christian Aid Week is being done differently and digitally this year. During this time together, we'll have space to read and listen, sing and pray, and remember and acknowledge that we're all part of a global community. We're neighbours near and far who are going through this coronavirus pandemic together. May our shared experience unite us in praise and prayer as one human family, separate but together in the home that is God's world. So as we begin, let's pray together. God of all the earth, Be present with us now in each of our homes as we connect together. Build us into a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to you through Jesus Christ, our risen Redeemer and Healer. We're now going to begin our worship by singing. Let us build a house where all can dwell. Now it might seem strange to sing the lyric, All are welcome in this place at a time when no one is welcome into our homes except those who live there, or into our churches, our church buildings, for collective worship. However, at this time more than ever, we're learning that the church is not the building, but it is us, the people. Peter calls us living stones in his epistle. Though separate, we can build up together into a spiritual house where love can dwell and be lived out in our everyday actions. So let's sing together.
as we turn on the tap, we turn our hearts towards you, O God. As we wet our hands, renew our thoughts so we might be transformed. As we lather soap between fingers and over all our hands, purge from us all that brings us harm and might harm others. Remove the invisible guilt and shame that so often keeps us from you. As we rinse our hands, we trust in your overflowing grace, making all things new. Amen. In a recent parish newsletter, Chris talked about joy, getting our lives in the right order. Jesus, others, yourself. Christian Aid Week is a real reminder of the need of that order. It's a time to be particularly aware of the needs of others. We've just washed our hands and hopefully some of us were aware that in some of the world people don't have running water, that some people go thirsty and hungry. And we have a part to play. We can help. But some people, and probably all of us at some time, get joy backwards. Yourself comes first. If you like, we in another way, wash our hands of the needs of others. We think only of me. But this has consequences for others and ourselves. Let's have a look. Whilst I'm reading the Gospel, cast your mind back to last year's Maundy Thursday service when Chris washed our feet and our hands. When he'd finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you should also wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. I tell you the truth. No servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. For Christian Aid, this coming week is going to be a whole lot different from that which they had planned. No house-to-house -house collections no church services focusing on their work, challenging times. Their theme this year was going to be on climate justice. In the meantime, the coronavirus epidemic has taken over the world, but the enormous needs resulting from climate change have not gone away. In fact, we're becoming more aware as very occasionally the news coverage turns to poorer countries that both issues are very closely related. The world's poorest people are the most vulnerable to this crisis. They are less resilient, have less access to health care and will be less able to weather the economic impact. It has maybe been a mild inconvenience for most of us to wash our hands more often. But what happens when you don't have running water in your home? What happens when the well is nearly dried up after years of drought and the water that comes out is dirty? What happens when you can't afford soap? 
Though Keith consuming his box of chocolates and then getting drowned in them was very funny while he made me laugh. The fact that the minority world, that's us, has consumed most of the world's resources is not so funny for the majority, poorer parts of the world. In the passage Helen read to us earlier from John's Gospel, Jesus told his disciples to wash one another's feet, just like he'd washed their feet when they arrived hot and dusty for the Passover meal. We don't really have an equivalent these days, but imagine washing a child's hands before you sit down to a meal. It's a picture of service. And Jesus is saying, I want you to serve others just like I've served you. As our teacher, he is setting us an example, showing us what real service looks like. Obviously, we can't go and wash the hands of someone in a poor country today, even if we wanted to. But we can help Christian Aid provide the water so that more efficient wells can be dug and stronger dams can be built so that water can be conserved and infection and sickness reduced. We watched a, a wonderful film on Netflix last week called The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind. If you want to see the issues facing poor communities in Malawi, it's a very good portrayal. And there are lots of resources, film clips to watch on the Christian Aid website. If we know what the need is, we have a responsibility. And Jesus tells us, just as he told the disciples at that Passover meal, you're blessed if you get on and do it. Asking ourselves how we can extend the love of Christ to our neighbours near and far has never been more important than it is this year. Amen. Let us pray. God, our refuge, we come to you with open hands. Some of us with hearts full of questions, some of us bruised by bereavement, some of us fearful of what the future holds, all of us stunned by the events of this year. Draw close to us now in each of our homes as we place our honest questions and hopes into your open, resurrected, yet scarred hands. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With the honesty of the psalmist, the wrestling questions of Job and the lament of the prophets, we bring to you our questions or our silence. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear the cry of our hearts, Lord, silent and aloud for bereaved neighbours near and far. Comfort those pained by being absent and hold close those who are hurting alone. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In this season of Easter, renew us with resurrection hope that while weeping lingers in this night, joy will come with the morning. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. On this Christian Aid Week, we pray for and with communities across the world who are most vulnerable to coronavirus. We pray for people living in refugee camps and city slums with limited sanitation facilities who are unable to wash their hands regularly and have little opportunity to isolate from others. We pray for Christian Aid partners working to provide soap and buckets, communicating clear, accurate information, raising the voices of the most vulnerable and ensuring that they're kept as safe as possible. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those of us who are self-isolating, which can sometimes feel like we aren't doing anything at all, Remind us that we're all doing our part and saving lives by staying at home. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
We pray for much wisdom and resources for those in local and national authority, for all the front line and key workers. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As lots of us have clapped to honour them, we clap our hands now in praise of your glorious creation and with the hope that, that the first shoots of another possible world are coming into view. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are ill, who particularly need your prayers. For Mary Wilson, Leslie Morgan, Eileen Hutchinson, Owen, Petria Burns, Tracy Parker, Tina, Joan Redmond, Brenda Hunt, John Gibson, Pauline Sterrett, Carolyle Shimmons, Christine Doherty, Pamela West, Donna Sensical, Marion Coyle, Alison Longhurst, and Stuart White. We also pray for those who are recently bereaved. And at the time of their year's mind, we remember before you John Cash and Jim Lamb. Help us, like them, to walk in your ways, and when our end too comes, be met with you, and seen over the threshold of death in light and love. God, in your mercy, hear all our prayers. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. As we go offline and wash our hands again, a blessing for us. May the presence of the Creator refresh you. May the comfort of the Son renew you. May the inspiration of the Spirit restore you. To be love in action, even from a distance, in our neighbourhoods near and far, this day and forevermore. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. What follows is a short video from Kate Botley offering you an opportunity to hear about the work of Christian Aid and how they need your donation and ways that you can do that. This Christian Aid Week, we need your help to support people living in poverty around the world who are facing the challenge of coronavirus. Christian Aid is providing vulnerable men, women and children with clean water, vital hand washing training and life saving food. But we desperately need your help. Please, could you give us just five pounds to help us save lives? Please text help to 70020 or visit us online to make your donation today.